Hello, David Zritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. Well, I'm back at the airport because I'm on the go. Yes, heading to Chicago, just shooting in, shooting out. Just an overnight, but uh, I'm fully decked out. This is a very kind of Brosnan, golden eye type look right now. In fact, this is the World Is Not Enough shirt from Turnbull and Asper. I've got a Benson and Clegg jacket. I've got my Aquaterra Skyfall on. I've got a uh, pair of Anthony Sinclair pants and Crockett and Jones boots. Fully loaded here because I'm heading to another Bond event. This one is at the Chicago Science Museum of Museum of Science and Industry. Chicago Museum of Science and Industry because they've got a whole Bond experience that I'm going to explore and I'm taking you with me. So you know what, without further ado, let's get on the plane. Okay, well, I was able to check into my hotel early, freshen up a little bit, make myself human again. You know, I gotta tell you something. This is not going to surprise any of you, but one of the things that I noticed as I was walking through the airports, I was receiving compliments about this double-breasted blazer. I guess a lot of people don't wear double-breasted blazers anymore, or at least in the United States they don't. And I got about two compliments uh, in one place on the blazer and then one compliment on my Bennett & Winch bag and then another on my uh, Anthony Sinclair pants. So kind of the whole ensemble. And I, again, I think it's that people don't travel dressed up. That is unusual. It's very Bond to me. And I just, I did a little bit out of laziness and a little bit out of pomp and circumstances of, you know, wanted to sort of get into the whole mood. But a lot of people don't do it anymore, and uh, people appreciated the effort. But enough about that, I gotta get an Uber, and I gotta get. Okay, so if you're seeing a little bit of a camera shake, that is not a special effect. Chicago has a different type of cold. And we're right by the water, but we're also right by, check this out, the Museum of Science and Industry. And by the way, a not so subtle 007 in the background, which just begs to be explored. I love this signage. We're gonna take an up close look at it. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to sort of give you an unboxing of the exhibit, of the event, if you will. From my point of view, it's the only way to really get through it and show you what it's like. You know, I, I do this with clothing and watches and things like that. I unopen it, I unopen it, I open it and let you experience what it's going to be like. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this event. Okay, I'm going to try to give you a, a play by play. So we've received these lanyards and I think it's a great idea, but basically what it is, is it's a timed entry into the exhibit. What they're trying not to do is have too many people crowd into the exhibit, but that's gonna be the entrance going all the way up.
event for you today as we kick off a groundbreaking exhibit here at MSI. 007 Science, Inventing the World of James Bond. The first official exhibit, which I'm so excited, the first official exhibit that focuses on science, technology, behind the iconic, and I mean iconic, James Bond film franchise. I got a sneak preview of the exhibit. It's absolutely fabulous. The team here, uh, led by Chevy and Eric, have done a beautiful job in bringing together some of these iconic uh, items. And what I wasn't expecting when I walked around was to have a really emotional, uh, nostalgic reaction. My, the 10-year-old inside of me kind of came to the surface as, as I looked at all these gadgets. It took me right back to my parents' living room uh, in our house in Ealing, West London, uh, watching these films and having them come, become part of the law uh, that we grew up with. I'm sure lots of you are going to have a similar experience tonight when you walk around. Um, uh, I think I've forgotten my speech after that, but uh, I'll carry on. Uh, it's a privilege to be here tonight, I have to say. And, um, the, uh, the first thing, normally I'm going things up and uh, designing gadgets and cars and all sorts of things, but tonight I'm here as a representative of the Beam Production uh, company that I've been with associated with them for over 45 years and it's been a real honour to be with them. Okay, we've now entered and uh, you can see that there's a lot to read. And that's the whole point of this. Uh, first of all, multilingual, which is always helpful. But this is about sights and sound. So as you can see, we've got some wonderful things from Elliot Carver. Check this out. This is going to be amazing. So we're going to do a quick rough run of everything in here. You could stay here and really take a look at all the designs and the words. We're going to give this a quick pass. Here's the Lockheed Jetstar. Now you're seeing screen used items. Um, the artwork, it's a really nice blend of things. And look at this, the MI6 maquette. Absolutely beautiful in all its glory. So if you were to take the time, you can see that there's a lot of props here. Some of these are going to look very familiar to you Bond lifestyle people. You've got Passports galore. Look at that. The Naval Intelligence, you've got the business card. The cufflinks. I mean, from a lifestyler standpoint, that is huge. But this, this is what they were talking about as far as it could take a long time to move through because, look at this, I've just come into this ga um, gallery and now you see that that room that I just left was actually small compared to this. The gadget watches, if you love the tech. The tech is all here as well. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I'm squidding out. By the way, I'm, I'm getting a real reaction because I'm seeing this for the first time. That's the multi-tone pager, as you can see right here. And I love that there is a full explanation of everything that you see. This isn't left up to certain guess. This is all about seeing the actual things, and then getting the descriptions, like the wet pipe. Oh my gosh. Folks, this is the Aston Martin DBS that rolls and rolls and rolls. This is it. Oh, I'm squitting out. Sorry, folks. You, again, you're getting the real flavor of seeing this for the first time. The missile. I mean, this is what happens when Eon provides all of the accoutrements, and it's very well laid out. It almost looks like a cube branch. You've got these interactive tables, TV sets galore everywhere, but then you've got all of a sudden, out of the blue, you've got your favorite Aston Martins, like the Living Daylights 1987 V8, complete with the skids. And by the way, those, you can see, that has seen some serious, serious action here. Take a look at this. Now, 
what I loved that they did was, this is about immersive moments. So over here, for example, they actually have a gadget lab. They recreated Q's gadget lab where you can design the right tools for the, the, the job. Look at this. You can go through all the briefing, the assignments. You can begin. You can put together a technology. How's that? And I mean, you can go right down the rails here and see everything. Folks, I'm giving you the Reader's Digest version because I don't want to show you everything. But look at this. If you love gadgets and you go down the list, I, these are things that I have never seen. What is number three? KGB concealment containers. Okay, these are actual spy pieces, real spy gadgets, which we like to see all of those as well. But I have an affinity to these. Oh my gosh. Tomorrow Never Dies, Little Living Daylights, Golden Eye Pen. And then of course, even something new from No Time to Die. Look at the eyeball. What a great shot. By the way, everything is so well lit for both pictures and video. You really get a sense, oh my gosh, wait. Calvin Dyson's gonna love that. That is Q's rake. Who wouldn't like that? I've never seen that out of, in the public. So much of this. I haven't seen in the public. Um, and again, you can see that a lot of this stuff is battered up because it's screen used. Like this, it's all water time, folks. And it's, you know, I've seen exhibits like this where they, they'll have the artifact, but they won't always have the descriptions. I want young people to actually be able to tell what these were and what these are all about. Look at the DB5. This is the one from GoldenEye, of course. and you're still surrounded by drawings. These are the Ken Adam ones. I believe the concept arts, yes. That he had champagne holders and all types of grenades in here, etc. But if you want to immerse yourself in the world of DB5s, this is the surround sound that you do. Okay, this is officially overwhelming. I knew that there'd be a couple pieces in here, but I didn't realize there was going to be this extent I just did a quick strafing run to show you. I didn't want to show you everything, but now I've got to go back and look at all of these details. They don't rush you through. In fact, this is why they have these lanyards to give you a certain time to come in because they don't want to rush the moments of dipping yourself, it's just like a chocolate coating of James Bond. And it takes some time to do exactly that. So we're going to keep going around and checking it out. Yes. Okay, so I just went through Gallery 1, and I'm heading to Gallery 2. I know, that's literally only half uh, of what they have. So let's make our way through the uh, throng of people eating food. I can't think of food and drinks right now. Um, by the way, I've had no alcohol tonight. What's wrong with you, David? Well, what's wrong with me is, look what's right in front of me. Hold on a second. All right, right in front of me, and sort of like not seen by a lot of people, you've got the uh, Skidoo, 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 from Die Another Day. But over here, and I'm telling you, people are walking by it because they probably don't know what it is, but it is the tow sled from Thunderball. Look at how amazing that looks. And to see it up in person, it's one of my favorite Sean Connery films, and amongst 
all of this. I mean, the, the rest of the museum is amazing as well, but you know something, folks? Gallery 2 beckons us, so we've got to head in right now. And again, this is all timed on our pass. Hello. Ready for Gallery 2. Thank you. All right, have fun. All right, here we go. And even more. So again, right off the bat, I mean, do not pass go. You've got some great things. Teehee, of course. Oh, the glass cutting device. You know, again, I, folks, I am not editing this. This is my actual, again, a Bond fan. I, I get it, I get it. Uh, but this is a Bond fan's reaction. And I'm gonna have to go back and study all these things because this is, it's, it's like getting into the Eon's archives. It's like, it's like Meg Simmons and the rest of the gang at Eon said, you know something, for, for one night, you're going to allow, I know what this is. You can't fool me. I saw that at the Washington one. But this to me is so much more. And, and I love that they do have a, we can't forget the name of this. It is a science bent. So they talk about the potential and the science behind it. So although you're seeing, for example, all of the props that you see in the movie, the ones that you recognize, that you absolutely love and adore, you also are connecting back to the science of what would make it work, either in real life or as part of the prop. And I know several fun prop makers in the Bond world that they would be like a kid in a candy shop with this type of stuff. You can do code cracking. And again, it gives you just the right amount of sort of connection to science without making it too much. In other words, you're probably asking yourself, would this be right for younger people? And I would say if you're seven, eight, 10, yes, that would be great. Oh, look at this. We had never see this. And these, they took some things out of the archive that uh, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I feel, gosh, is it too weird to say honored to be in front of this? But I am. Okay, so this is very cool. This, th they talked about this hiding in plain sight. So they're, they're, they talk about spy craft and then they give the aligning moment in Bond with obviously the props. Sorry about my awful shadow here. This is uh, good for pictures, not always great for video. But again, I don't want to show you everything. I want to show you a lot of it, but just to get a taste. And by the way, there is no way for you to fully appreciate um, all of this until you're here. I mean, to be here and see the dimensionality of everything, to see what it all looks like. You know, for example, the Lotus. Uh, oh, that's fully decked out with props. Now I've seen this Washington DC, but not with all the props and gadgets over here. This is almost like, you know, the bond in motions that you see, but totally tricked out in a more immersive way. And it's sprawling. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, it is sprawling. Um, much bigger than I expected. It gives you a breath in between everything. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go quick because I, oh gosh, wait, I was gonna go quick. That's the sexy. That is definitely the sexy right there. Holy cow. Okay, I did one of these in Washington DC years ago when they had Exquisitely Evil. You basically try to hold on to the beam for I think a minute and you basically time yourself how long you can do it. It's not easy, it's, it's literally, it's a beam, it's not a pole. So you've gotta like get your hands around it and it hurts and we'll see if anybody's up for it. You've got all the different iterations of robots. Oh, we know what that is all about. <laughs> Suction cups. Jetpacks. Oh, look at this. I mean, this is this is film history. Okay, I'm here in front of the jetpack, and I'm here with my good friend Doug from the Ian Fleming Foundation. Doug, you've got an incredible story about this jetpack. 
Well, it's a story that not too many people know. Years ago, I reached out to the University of Buffalo to make an inquiry if they still had uh, the jetpack from Thunderball. And the, uh, the university's uh, technical instructor, engineering instructor, mm -hmm. he, to his, the best of his knowledge, he told me that he didn't think they still had it, but he said he would ask around. Come to find out, uh, it had been squirreled away in the back of a janitorial closet for decades and the janitor who had been there for a really long time told the instructor that uh, there were times where it was in the way and he was tempted to throw it away because nobody knew what it was nobody had any idea of why it ended up in the closet uh, so the board after my inquiry about obtaining it the board at the university of buffalo decided to to hang on to it oh. so so Thanks to my phone call and the janitor stepping forward, uh, we can all enjoy this. Time. It was saved from the trash heap. It was saved from the trash heap. That's yeah. amazing, and every every one of these things has a story. But you had to share that one. Thank oh, you. Oh yeah, you bet. Thanks for asking. You got it. You're going to come in here and you're going to walk through film history. Oh, and uh, what would any museum be without a walk through the gift shop? But we're not quite ready for that yet. Okay, so a testimony of a really good experience, or in this case, event and an exhibit, is I've had to go to the bathroom for the last hour and a half, and I don't want to miss anything. Like, I, I, I'm nervous at any time they're going to call, last call, to see all this stuff, and um, I've got more stuff to see. That's how good this exhibit is. My bladder, she is a hurting. But the things we do for James Bond. You ready? I, I was born ready, sir. Yeah. I am here with the legendary, just accepted, John Cork. How are you, my friend? Um, I was doing well until my humility was destroyed with, with, with that introduction. So. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, we're, we're standing in the right place for you. You've given so much to the Bond community, um, official, unofficial. But deep down, you're a Bond fan. When you attend an event like this, what's the experience that you have? The experience for me is really an experience of feeling like I made a bet on a good horse oh. that keeps winning at the race. Because, you know, I was an adolescent and I could have become the world's biggest Led Zeppelin fan or I could have become the world's biggest, you know, Burt Reynolds fan or whatever. My Little Pony. But I don't think that was around just then. Probably. I'm a little older, a little <laughs> outdate My Little Pony a little bit. But I, like, got into Bond. Yeah. And it stuck with me. It was at that formative age where it stuck with me. And so then years later, uh, Mike Van Blaricum, Doug Rodinius, and I get together and we decide we're going to form this nonprofit, the Influming Foundation. Yes. And we we end up with this submarine, which isn't here, the Neptune from Fury. I Island. just saw it in Washington, D.C. There Amazing. it is. Amazing. Still there, you know, doesn't have any gadgets, not even that cool of a thing, but it's from a bond film. So then, then, what the hell happens? We've got to find stuff for a car show. Doug goes down to the Bahamas. He finds this as somebody's basic lawn ornament there, sitting down in the Bahamas up on bricks, painted red. They put Christmas lights all over it. Oh my gosh. Doug Rodinius rescues this thing. I remember helping to like offload it from trailers and stuff like that. And and like I'm standing in front of it now, the Museum of Science and Industry, the pinnacle, the pinnacle of museum greatness in America is this museum. And here we are. Here we are. And I'm going like, what did I have to do with this? Very, very, very little. Doug Rodinius did all the, the heavy lifting. The Bond producers made all the great films. Other people did all the great stuff. And I get to go along for the ride. So this is two childhood fantasies. It's the museum as a child and Bond. Adolescent fantasies. Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't say childhood. I mean, I'm 11 years old when I become so a I'm, Bond I'm fan. I'm aging you too much. I, you know, it's 1973. I'd seen Bond films before then, but it's 1973. The onslaught of adolescence is hitting me. Right. I bike to go see Live and Let Die with a friend of mine. And I'm like, wait a second, this guy knows how to talk to women. Yeah. 
holy crap, that was like a foreign language to me, I, I, like a course it, in that. It, back then he it could have been cool. a template, not so much nowadays. He was cool. I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama. I was surrounded by Burt Reynolds-esque rednecks. Yep. I didn't think they were cool. <laughs> I didn't think they were cool. You didn't cool. think Deliverance would attract women? I saw Deliverance in the theater on its original run. But was it on a date? No, no, it was with my parents. Oh, that's right. That's right. Not that's right. uncomfortable at all. Mom and, Mom and Pop took, took John to see that one. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. So, I did not want to squeal like a pig. I wanted to order a martini shake and not stir. And what happens? Sweet. I go up to be a guy who doesn't drink. I don't smoke. I don't own a gun. I do own a sports car, but it's just a Miata. It's not anything really too like fancy or schmancy. But I got to tell you, James Bond taught me so much about life about trying to stay cool under pressure, about having direction in your life, on always being on some kind of mission somewhere, on seeking out the best of the best when you can and enjoying life to the fullest. And that's what this does. It reminds yeah. me of those important things of life. It's true. It's yeah. true. I and love that's, it. That's what James Bond is to me. It's not just nostalgia. It's not just, it's certainly not a role model in that sense. But it's sort of a guiding light of something that yeah. says, here's a path through. Light guardrails. Yeah. When, yeah. When, when, in, when in doubt, ask yourself, what would James Bond do? And then maybe do the exact opposite. <laughs> All right. Know. You heard it from John. All right. Well, this seemed like an appropriate place to do a uh, sort of a roundup of everything going on. Nice bright lights. Let me give you a quick review of this. Um, my expectations were here, they were pretty high. And if I was as tall as Jaws, I couldn't raise my hands high enough where the reality is above the expectation. This, and again, I'm, I'm almost teased because eventually I have to go to sleep, they're gonna kick me out of here, but you could spend, I'm not exaggerating, three to four hours in these two galleries. That doesn't even include the rest of the museum, which is epic. It would take you probably days to get through. But what I love about this is it's infotainment. And you know I believe in infotainment when it comes to Bond. We're sharing with the public more about James Bond in a very approachable way. There is education, but it's not shoving it down your throat. It's, it's, it's aligned to the character of the Bond. It, it takes you at a breakneck speed with such escapism and adventure that you have a smile on the whole time. And it's not just about being a Bond fan. You do not need to be a fanatic. You could be a very casual, as they say, normie, and really enjoy everything that this brings to the table because it's fun, it's immersive, it's interactive, it's educational. It's about heroicism, not just with James Bond as a character, but the people behind the scenes. It really does tell you about the movie magic. So I want to thank, first and foremost, the Ian Fleming Foundation. Uh, I, I'm here as a guest of theirs, and um, I want to thank them for inviting me. I want to thank Ian and all the different partners, and of course, the Museum of Science and Industry for housing this for the next year. Get here. If you're a Bond fan, get a ticket, get here. You're going to love it. I'm going to take more of this in. This has been David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. We'll see you all real soon. Take care. Wow. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from The Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.